At last, we have a dinosaur on dinosaur, carnivore on herbivore, hunt and death on screen. Let's look at this next episode. Hello and welcome back to Tri Claw Gaming with me, Fletcher, and the fourth episode review for Prehistoric Planet. If you haven't seen my reviews on the previous three episodes, please do go back and give them a watch. They should all be in their own playlist on the YouTube channel. And before we get to what I think of the fourth episode, don't forget to like, comment, and if you are new here, subscribe for further content from all of us at Triclaw Gaming. So, episode four, the polar ice episode. What did I make of it? Well, again, I didn't quite think it was as good as the first episode. There are many good parts of this episode, and we do get to see some very interesting species. We have these wonderful fully feathered ornithomimus with these brilliant red plumage on their arms. And we have this wonderful scene of them uh, basically thieving from one another to fill their nests with vegetation. We also have quite a lot of screen time of Oloro Titan, and it's nice to see Oloro Titan walking on four legs as it should, Frontier. We also get to see Antarctopelta, which is the first, I think, Ankylosaurids that we actually have named and on screen for any length of time in the series. And it's nice to finally get one, and Antarctopelta is probably one of the cutest. Now, much of this episode feels a bit like the previous episodes that we have already gotten. This episode has more than a fair share of baby trauma as well. Um, one Allura Titan baby seems to be left behind to be literally blood sucked to death by mosquitoes but luckily does eventually come back and survive and right at the very beginning a hadrosaur baby we don't know what hadrosaur this is it's not named unfortunately but a hadrosaur baby falls in a fast flowing river and luckily does climb out back to its mum so i want to focus on two particular scenes the first is this forest fire with these truodontids Firstly, I have to say I love how the Truodontids look with these very distinctive head feathers. The whole scene is quite um, cinematic with the fire all around and these Truodontids moving around in the darkness and the smoke. However, the scene suggests that this Truodontid is intelligent enough to pick up a burning stick from the forest fire and move it to start a forest parts of the forest fire elsewhere in order to get prey to come out for it to hunt. I feel that seriously speculative behaviour and I also feel it's borderline unrealistic behaviour. If I was watching Jurassic World I wouldn't care but this is supposed to be driven by the latest science and I don't think it's realistic that any animal would pick up a burning stick and bring it to somewhere where there's not fire in order to start fire. It feels like anthropomorphising the tr this truodontid and I just don't think it's realistic. If real animals do this please let me know in the comments because I've never heard of this behavior from any animal. Generally all animals are scared of fire. It, it's a, Even humans are scared of fire, it, it's part of nature so it just strikes me as very unrealistic. The second scene I wanted to focus on however is the big scene of the Pachyrhinosaurus and the Nanukasaurus having this wonderful cinematic showdown. Firstly, the Pachyrhinosaurus look brilliant. I love the little quills going along the backs and I love the bright colours in the male frills. Again, Frontier, you could learn something about how to make good looking Ceratopsian dinosaurs from this series. The Nanooks as well look brilliant. They're, they are fully feathered, which I suppose does look a bit strange. They do look a bit like turkeys. They, they still maintain this sort of danger feature to them. And the scene progresses on with the Nanookasaurus basically hunting down as a three the Pachyrhinosaurus herd and it's a very cinematic scene and it's nice to see some actual proper hunting behavior from a carnivorous dinosaur on a herbivore dinosaur. Yes, we got a little bit of hunting behavior between the Velociraptors and the Pterosaurs, 
but I would say it wasn't really, I don't really consider it proper hunting. I mean, the, the female Velociraptor literally just flops on the pack of pterosaurs from above and that's about it. Here we actually have Nunukasaurus follow and test the herd and actually what I feel is actual hunting behavior. And in the end, uh, Pachyrhinosaurus does end up getting separated from the herd and the Nunukasaurus bring it down. It's again also the first time we see a carnivorous dinosaur kill a herbivore Vorus dinosaur. Now that for me is a bit strange. This is the fourth episode or five and this is the first time we have a, a dinosaur kill on screen as it were. I know that the point of this is to move away from dinosaurs being depicted as monsters but at the same time hunting is natural behavior for any carnivorous dinosaur and we've seen so little of it. So it's nice to finally get some proper dino killing action on screen. Apart from that there isn't much to say about this episode and I have to... I'm going to be controversial here and I'm going to say that I think Walking with Dinosaurs did their polar episode better than this one does. I think with Walking with Dinosaurs the stakes were a lot clearer. They focused heavily on a small area of the forest and on a particular type of dinosaur and the challenges it faced it being a polar dinosaur. I think it just works better. This episode it didn't, I don't think it clicked as well as other episodes for me. I think this episode could have been better. That's. That I think that's what I'm going to say because I didn't want I don't want to be like I said a couple of episodes ago I don't want to be critical in all of these videos I want to save that to the end however I do think this episode was one of the weaker ones and definitely not up there with the first episode or yesterday's episode. Now I'm hoping that tomorrow the final episode looks good. We've got Carnotaurus coming we've got I think it's Quetzalcoatlus coming it looks like we're going to have some very good on-screen action and I'm curious to see what the last episode is going to be like um, because usually the last episode is where David Attenborough will have at the end of the episode a sort of profound message to get across to people um, so I'm curious about whether he's going to give us something like that in that episode. Let me know down in the comments what you thought about this particular episode. Do you think I'm being too harsh in saying that it's not as good as the others? Um, what did you think of the dinosaurs we saw in it? I still think Antarctopelta is again one of the cuter species we've seen on screen. Don't forget if you are new here, please do remember to like, comment and subscribe for further content from us at Triclaw Gaming. Until tomorrow's video, stay safe and goodbye.